Hey friends, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you on these weekly videos. My goal is for us to look at the various aspects of this whole COVID experience and develop perhaps a, a different perspective, what I'm going to call a, a pastoral care perspective. My hope is that as a result of our time together, you'll feel encouraged, maybe challenged in your thinking. Uh, perhaps it will prompt some discussion between you and your friends, your spouse, your family, maybe even your grow group. Today, I want us to look at prayer. Now, I imagine that's something a lot of us are doing a lot of these days, and we need to be. We are in a very serious situation that demands prayer by God's people. Over the years, though, I've noticed that for many believers, it's easy to slip into what I call a feast or famine cycle of prayer. On the one hand, when, when something comes along like COVID, that's big and bad and terrible and, and beyond our control, that's when we're in the feasting stage of prayer. We're on our knees a lot because if God doesn't come through, who knows what may happen? We need him to come through. And so we're praying. But then when life goes back to some state of normalcy, whatever that is, it's easy to slip into the famine stage where we begin to neglect prayer, perhaps even altogether. And the dangerous thing about that is that it can create an ambivalence within us about the efficacy of prayer. Is it doing any good? Do I know what I'm doing? Do I even know how to pray? Where would I begin to pray about something like COVID or the other serious issues of my life? If you find yourself feeling that way these days, if you're experiencing uh, prayer paralysis, I want to offer a suggestion or two that I hope will be helpful. Because God wants us to be people of prayer. I mean, the Bible is full of encouragement for us to pray. It not only assumes that we can pray, but that we will. So let's talk about how we can be people of prayer. You know, the most helpful thing that I've ever read regarding prayer, I found in a book by Richard Foster titled, appropriately enough, Prayer. And at the beginning of the book, Foster says, pray as you can, not as you can't. Pray as you can, not as you can't. I think one thing that holds many people back from praying is this self-consciousness, this, this fear that somehow our prayers don't measure up. We begin to compare ourselves to, to other uh, people, uh, especially those that pray in public. You know, I could never pray like Pastor Ken. I could never pray like Pastor Dan. Well, guess what? God doesn't want you to pray like Pastor Ken. Only Pastor Ken can do that. He doesn't want you to pray like Pastor Dan. Only I can do that. No, God wants you to pray as you can, not as you can't. It's not as though God is sitting up there in heaven evaluating the quality of your prayers, your eloquence, whether you remember this or forgot that. No, God is just thrilled that you're fellowshipping with him. Some years ago, a man came to see me who was struggling with his prayer life. He, he wanted to be a man of prayer earnest in his desire, but he was bumping up against this very issue of self-consciousness, of, of comparison. And I remember him asking me, why, why would God listen to what I have to say? Why would he even find what I have to say interesting or important enough? I don't know how to pray like you guys. And I remember thinking as, as we were talking, the image came to my mind of way back when our oldest daughter, was first learning how to walk. Now, those of you that are parents will remember this. You know, little folks in the earliest days, that what's the first thing they do? They, they find something to grab a hold of and, and pull themselves up. And when that happens, you know that the first step isn't far away. And then finally, the big day comes where they take that first very uncertain, wobbly, shaky step and then kerplunk, right down on their bottoms they go. I said to this man, do, do you think that when our daughter took her first step and then straightway fell down, that Becky and I said, what's wrong with you? Everybody knows how to walk. Come back when you figured it out. No, not at all. No, we cheered, we danced, we said, yay. We wanted to encourage her. We wanted her to know that she had done good. We wanted her to learn how to walk and we were just thrilled that she was taking those first steps. 
I said to him, that's how God feels about us when it comes to prayer. God is just thrilled that we are taking those first steps, that we are entering into fellowship with him. It's not a matter of evaluation. It's not a matter of grading. It's a matter of relationship. And God is just so pleased that the relationship is there and that we want to be with him. So if you find yourself these days in a state of prayer paralysis, if you're questioning the quality of your prayers, if you're wondering, is God listening to me? Take heart and remember, pray as you can, not as you can't. And God will be pleased. Let's pray together now. Father, we give you thanks for the gift of prayer, for providing for us a means by which we can talk and have fellowship and and be friends. Lord, forgive us for the times that we've neglected that gift and place within us a renewed desire, a renewed hunger and thirst, not only to pray, but to enter into the fullness of a relationship with you. We love you, Lord, and we are so glad that you love us too. We offer our prayer in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks for your time today. It's been great to be with you. I'll see you next week.